Folks, this is not going to be your typical TV review, so I'm going to have to go ahead and ask you to uh, buckle up for this one. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and this is my somewhat unconventional review of the Vizio Quantum Pro TV. Unconventional in that there will be a little more preamble before I start talking about this TV's performance, and even when I do get to the performance section, things are gonna, well, you'll see. So if you haven't already grabbed yourself a beverage and a snack, you might wanna go do that now. It's cool, I'll wait. Oh, hey, that was quick. You all set? All right, let's go. Oh, and if you're at the store right now and just wanna know whether you should buy this TV, feel free to click the takeaway section that we have time-coded and linked in the description. So folks, here's the deal. My first flat panel TV was a 37-inch Vizio. I was upgrading from a 32-inch JVC CRT TV that weighed like 150 pounds and I was just so stoked to have a TV that I could mount on my wall. This is back before I knew anything about black levels or the fact that some folks were paying as much for plasma TVs as you might pay for a small car at the time. Eventually, as I got into doing TV reviews, I managed to snag myself a Panasonic ST60 plasma TV, which I still have kicking around in a storage unit, but that Vizio TV, and Vizio in general, has held a special place in my heart ever since. I even bought my parents a Vizio flat screen. Over the years since then, I've reviewed many Vizio TVs, and until very recently, Vizio's TVs were reliably the best value on the market. Vizio stood alone in this regard, again, until very recently. Now, some of you already know that I'm about to say that Hisense and TCL came seemingly out of nowhere and started giving Vizio some serious competition. About six years ago, TCL and its six series TV stole Vizio's value crown. It happens, that's how things go sometimes. Since then, Vizio has toyed around with some interesting product line diversification. At one point, the 2022 Vizio P-Series Quantum X was the brightest TV on the market. And though it was punching up into the premium price class, it was still less expensive than the nearest competition. And that was the last time I was just blown away by a Vizio TV's picture performance. But for the past few years, one thing has held me back from giving just terrifically enthusiastic recommendations to Vizio TVs. That would be its smart TV interface. I didn't like the layout and I always felt it was just sluggish. It just seemed dated and behind the times. Now keep in mind, Vizio was contending with the Roku and Google TV platforms in TCL and Hisense TVs. So you can imagine my excitement when Vizio let me know it was completely overhauling its smart TV platform. And I got a sneak peek of it in action and I got even more excited. I believe I started positing the possibility that Vizio was about to stage a huge comeback. Which leads us here to the Vizio Quantum Pro. It is not the over-the-top, ultra-premium, knit-bursting TV the P-Series Quantum X was. This is more of a value-oriented TV, which has always been Vizio's bread and butter. And it's got Vizio's new home screen. That's what Vizio calls its smart TV platform now. Plus, it boasts some pretty encouraging specs for its price. Which brings us to comparison time. At around $700 for the 65-inch model that you see here, the Vizio Quantum Pro competes directly with the Hisense U7K and the TCL Q7. It actually undercuts those TVs by about 50 and 100 bucks respectively. We'll get back to comparing in a moment. Right now, let me tell you about my first moments with the Vizio Quantum Pro. This TV is packed extremely well. Now, my review sample came in a shipping box, so I had to get the TV box out of that, but as I cracked open the TV box, I was really impressed to see that Vizio has reinforced the corners of its foam with rigid plastic shields that I think will do wonders to protect this thing in shipping. So if you order this TV online, I think you can trust it's gonna arrive in good shape no matter how the box itself looks by the time it gets to you. Assembly was simple, or well, it should have been. See, I made a mistake here and didn't seat the legs just right and got the height off. 
The Quantum Pro allows a low slung option or one propped up a bit more so that you can toss a soundbar below it. I opted for the latter as I intended to keep a soundbar going on the test bench while evaluating this TV. Now, my first experience with the new Vizio home screen was very encouraging. The TV boots up super quickly. There is virtually no lag as I click around the screen or enter text. I mean, really strong start. The remote is simple enough with an ergonomic feel and volume keys on the side, kind of like a Roku remote. Odd choice of streaming partners taking up residence on the hotkeys, but okay, another thumbs up. Then I started watching content casually and well, I felt a bit deflated, but that's happened before with other TVs that I eventually warmed up to. So though I clearly look nonplussed here, I would later regain some optimism, even though at this point I had already suspected that I was not gonna be a fan of the backlight system. Over the course of the next several days, I just used the Quantum Pro in everyday life and gathered some notes along the way. At some point I wrote, seems great when the content is bright, but less so with dimmer content. Then eventually it was time to measure the TV. And folks, that's when things flew off the rails for me. Now, before I go on, I wanna call out that the folks at Vizio have been wonderful to work with throughout this process. They have patiently answered questions, hopped on the phone with me at my request. They've been very kind. Now, while the folks that I talk to are internal product marketing and engineering folks, it's a nice reminder that Vizio is a US-based company and generally offers solid customer service, which is a bonus in my book. Anyway, guys, the measurements. This TV was not measuring well at all, and that just didn't make sense, especially since Vizio had provided some measurements that it had taken as part of a reviewer's guide that they sent me. After a lot of back and forth, I noticed that the measurements they got were attained with some very specific and, to me, somewhat odd settings caveats. Anyway, I made some changes that I'm about to share with you, and I was shocked to see measurement results that are among the best I've seen from any LCD-based TV. Now that may sound like a good thing, but I don't think it is. Here's the deal, I'm just gonna show you, but before I do, it's important for me to repeat something I've said countless times on this channel, but it's important to keep this in mind. Measurements never, ever tell the whole story, and sometimes they can be downright misleading. Right, so these are the measurements I got from the Vizio Quantum Pro's calibrated dark and calibrated picture modes. These long lines here are not good. You want these to be as short as possible. The lower the number, the better. Anything above a three is technically a visible error, and as you can see, the errors are well above that. In some cases, they are literally off the charts. Now, those are the measurements I got with the TV using the default settings for calibrated and calibrated dark, okay? You turn the TV on, pick these supposedly more accurate picture presets, and that's what you get, which by the numbers is not great. But watch what happens when I turn off the local dimming feature. Guys, these are some of the best pre-calibration readings I've ever seen from an LCD TV. What in the world? Look, here's grayscale with the local dimming setting on medium, bad, very bad. Here is the same test after turning off local dimming, amazingly good. Here's a color chart with local dimming on medium, bad. Some of the worst I've seen from a TV in this class, but turn off the local dimming, suddenly it's outstanding. So what in the world is going on here? Well, apparently it is not uncommon for some local dimming systems to negatively impact the performance of a TV, but I've never seen it like this. The gamma is very poor with local dimming turned on and that poor gamma performance has a negative impact on just about everything else that I measure. And guys, I gave this TV every opportunity. I made the tests as forgiving as I could. I increased the test window size to 18%. I increased the delay between when the pattern went up and the colorimeter took its reading so that the backlight had plenty of time to do what it needed to do, just in case it was a little bit slow. Turns out, unless I use a full screen test pattern or turn local dimming off, which is basically the same thing, the measurements were consistently not good. Now, I did notice that the bigger the test pattern got, the better the measurements got. 
And that's gonna be important in a moment. So just log that in your memory for now. Anyway, it can be argued that for SDR content, local dimming systems can negatively impact grayscale and color performance. And so it is a less stressful approach to test full screen or with local dimming off. But I have never done that. And I've seen much better results than this, even from the TCL Q7, which I kind of dumped on in my review for not measuring as well as I'd hoped, just to put all this business into perspective. So I guess I can see an argument in favor of turning off local dimming and turning the brightness way down for great accuracy in a dark room for SDR content. And when in a bright room, using the local dimming to get a brighter picture with decent contrast at the expense of accuracy. Okay, I guess I can live with that proposition. Sounds like a bit much to me, but you know, I'm trying to throw some bones here. But for HDR, I cannot be as gracious because for HDR, you need local dimming or you will not get a good picture. That's because the TV has to cover a much wider range of brightness and you want those punchy HDR highlights. If you don't have local dimming, it's just gonna be a blooming and halo festival. In short, it's gonna look like this. This is HDR content on this TV with the local dimming turned off. Um, no thank you. So for HDR, as you can see in these measurement results, unless the whole screen is lit up bright, accuracy will not be there. But only nerds care about accuracy, right? Most people aren't gonna care. Mm, to a point, sure, I think there's something to that. But to discuss this, let's step out of the Knit Nerd section and start talking about this TV's real world performance. So if you're just rejoining us, having skipped the Knit Nerd's measurement section, let me quickly catch you up. It turns out that if you turn off this TV's local dimming feature, it is remarkably accurate. But as we know, not everyone cares about accuracy as long as the TV looks good, right? So does this TV look good? It can, yes. When this TV is putting up a uniformly bright image, that is the content is of well-lit scenes, this TV is a lot of fun to watch. It gives you that vibe that you've got a great TV on your hands. And bright content is exactly the kind of demo footage you will see at the store. So if you're looking at a Vizio Quantum Pro at the store right now and wondering if it's a good TV to buy, I would say, yes, it's a fine TV to buy so long as you mostly watch cable TV and mostly watch bright content like sports or daytime television, things like that. Just be aware that its color accuracy isn't great, uh, especially for HDR content. Perfect example, I used this TV to watch the Super Bowl. It was in HDR on YouTube TV and Paramount Plus, and the Kansas City Chiefs uniforms were not the right color. And you could just tell. Now, if that kind of thing isn't gonna bother you, cool, no judgment for me. So to reiterate, when the TV is putting out bright content, it looks pretty good. But when the lights go down on the content, when you're watching images with a lot of contrast or maybe the content is just dimmer, if you watch a lot of sci-fi or space-based content, like anything from the Star Wars universe or Star Trek, that kind of thing, that's where this TV comes up short. That's how I would sum up the Vizio Quantum Pro. Beautiful when it's bright. So if you just need a bright TV, then this could be a decent option for you. Unless that is, you watch a lot of low quality streaming content. Because aside from the not so impressive backlight performance, this TV's other struggle seems to be in cleaning up the low quality streaming TV content. Case in point, watching this YouTube golf video, which admittedly was a live stream, so the quality was a little compromised to begin with, but there is obvious macro blocking and banding here that the TV isn't cleaning up. To make sure it wasn't just an unredeemable signal, I checked the Sony A95K and let's be fair, that TV is a magician with processing, but it was significantly better. So I asked Chris, my producer, to check the same video on his Samsung QN90C and sure enough, it was better on that TV too. So maybe not the best TV for low quality streaming content either. All of this to say, I just can't recommend this TV when the Hisense U7K exists. I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm just saying there is a better option at the same price. And I want you to know what you'll be getting because I can guarantee you that 
What you'll see on this TV at the store is not what you can expect to get when you get it home, unless you just watch really bright stuff all the time. Then you should be just fine. The TV's got a nice price on it, and like I said, Vizio's new home screen is great. That's the best thing Vizio has done for its TV business in like seven years. And thank you for that, Vizio. So not the big comeback I was hoping for. Doesn't change the fact that I still have high hopes for Vizio going forward. I know there are really smart people there. I just need the execs to let those smart people do what they're good at doing because I just get this vibe like the engineers are saying, hey, we should really do this. And some bean counter is coming along and saying, Nah, I think we'll not do that so we can save on costs. Of course, all that may soon be moot. Rumor has it that Walmart is in talks to purchase Vizio for something around $2 billion. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about all of it? Let's get after it down in the comments. And while you're down there, please hit the like button. It's more important than ever for this video. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. Let me make sure it's not a surprise TV delivery.